All right, good evening folks, it's Enforcer Matt, and welcome back to another Short War video, and today we have very big news coming out of the Middle East. Right now, it looks like the stage is being set for a major war to break out between Israel and also Hezbollah inside of Lebanon. This is a very concerning situation, and right now we're seeing that Iran and other countries are threatening to get involved in this, potentially sending the entire region into chaos, and we're also seeing footage of Israeli equipment heading toward the Lebanese border, and we're also seeing footage as well that Hezbollah is also getting gearing up with their own equipment to get ready for this major showdown. So right now it's a big red alert in the Middle East and it looks like something might happen in the next 24 hours or so. And we're also seeing in Ukraine that there's major attacks by Ukrainian forces on Russian oil depots and refineries and also a training base as well and we have all the footage from that. But with that we're moving into our first article of the day which goes to OSINT Defender. And real quick I want to recap the events that have led up to this escalation by both Israel and Hezbollah which has led to this entire situation. And right here we can see the footage showing the exact moment a rocket launched from southern Lebanon by Hezbollah towards the town of Majdal Shams struck a soccer field where a children's match was being held, resulting in the death of at least 10 Druze civilians. And also, just to be clear, we will not be showing any of the gruesome footage from the soccer field itself. That footage is simply too horrific to show, and we will not be showing that on the video or the war stream either. So here we have an ungraphic video right here showing the moment the rocket came in and hit the soccer field, uh, proving this was indeed a Hezbollah rocket uh, which carried this out. So let's take a look at the video. And right here you can see there's a major explosion right down there. That was the explosion on the children's soccer field. And as you can see, that was a missile impacting that field. There was a narrative going around for a while trying to be pushed by Hezbollah that this was an Israeli missile fragment that hit this uh, soccer field. And clearly, you can see from the footage, there was an explosion and that was not a fragment falling down injuring the civilians. So very clearly, this is a Hezbollah attack and that is pretty much not in dispute any longer. But with that, we're jumping into our next article here. And this one goes to... To insider paper. And right here we can see an Iran-made Flock 1 missile was used in the attack on the Majdal Shams, according to an Israeli army spokesman that said this was based on intelligence they got from the attack site itself. So as we've known for a very long time, the Iranian government supplies the proxy forces with weaponry and also equipment directly. There is no middleman in that, and they supply the weaponry right to the Hezbollah forces. And this is a perfect example of that. We see an Iran-made missile being used on the attack, the very heinous attack, on the Israeli civilians. So Iran is complicit in this as much as the Hezbollah forces are as well. And this is clear evidence of that. But with that being said, we're moving into our next article here. And this one goes to Charles Lister. And we see here that as a result of this attack, we immediately saw multiple Israeli airstrikes reported across southern Lebanon in several different locations. And all the attacks were conducted mainly by fighter jets and not by Israeli drones. And as you can see right here in these two photographs, there were some very major explosions happening in major cities across Lebanon. Lebanon, and this was an immediate response by the Israelis to go ahead and soften the area up for a future ground invasion or a future escalation, which might be coming in the next 24 hours. But this was the immediate response, but this is definitely not the entire response. But with that, moving into our next article here, this one goes to you, Fintuck's News. And about five hours ago, we learned that the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's plane landed once again back in Israel after he had to cut his trip to the United States short following these atrocious attacks. And we also learned that the Prime Minister went to a security assessment in Kyria for a security cabinet discussion. And just for everybody's information, the uh, discussion with the security cabinet has already concluded about a couple hours ago and we're currently in the stage of waiting on a final decision from Benjamin Netanyahu on what the exact response is going to look like toward the Hezbollah forces in Lebanon. So we're currently awaiting a decision and that is what the current status is uh, on the meeting with the security cabinet. But with that we're moving on to our next post here and this one goes to Nexta and we're learning from sources in the Israeli media that the defense minister Yolv Golant and also the IDF chief of general staff have approved operational plans for a ground operation in Lebanon and also like I said a moment ago the Prime Minister Netanyahu is expected to make a final decision on the matter today. And make no mistake about it while Israel wants to definitely go in and attack the Hezbollah forces I'm sure there are other powers at play for example like the United States which are probably making statements uh, suggesting certain routes and options uh, to Netanyahu which may be complicating the decision just a little 
bit. But nonetheless, pretty much every minister in uh, Israel is calling on some sort of response toward the Hezbollah forces. And at this point, it's going to be very hard for Netanyahu to back off of this uh, without some sort of major response. So I would say the odds of something happening uh, that's major is probably very high at the moment. But with that, we're moving into our next article here. And this one goes to the Spectator Index. And we're learning from Israel's Channel 14 that Netanyahu has received approval from the U.S. for an operation against Hezbollah. And this is actually a first. We have never heard the U.S. give approval to Israel to conduct an operation inside of Lebanon to get rid of Hezbollah up until this point. This is the first time we've heard this. And typically, the U.S. has taken an approach of de-escalation, trying to call Israel from doing anything too rash. But right now, we're seeing, according to Channel 14 in Israel, that approval has been given by the U.S. for an operation. So that is something also indicating that something is very likely to happen in the next 24 hours or so. But nonetheless, moving on to our next article here, we have one from the Mossad Commentary. And while all these plans are being approved, we are seeing heavy equipment moving north inside of Israel toward the Lebanese border. So let's take a look at the video and see the equipment in action. And right here you see several semi-trucks loaded up with really large tanks right here and also other equipment uh, related to the military as well. And it's heading toward the Lebanese border, uh, which is very indicative of something going down here very shortly. And we can see that it's making its way right up that hill toward the border. So very escalatory indeed, and it looks like things are about to go down very fast. And with that, we're moving into our next article here. And this one goes to Inside Geopolitics. And we're learning from the New York Times that expectations in Washington on Sunday morning are that the Israeli response may be greater than expected, uh, even according to the estimations by the U.S. intel community. So once again, just more indication that something massive is probably going to go down very shortly. Uh, but with that, we have another article here from Inside Geopolitics. And we're also hearing from the enemy forces that the Hezbollah leader Nasrallah has approved plans uh, against Israel for war, and Hezbollah also confirms that all plans are ready for immediate execution and a devastating response that Israel has never seen since 1948. So while this is certainly not good that Hezbollah is also preparing to respond to Israel, I really don't have much faith that Hezbollah will actually carry out any atrocities toward Israel in the future now that war might be on the horizon. Uh, this will probably be something that Hezbollah simply uses to use as propaganda points and also really puff up their talk like they're going to do something, but in reality Israel is armed to the teeth and and Hezbollah is not going to stand a chance against Israel if they really unleash all their force uh, on those uh, forces there in Lebanon. So Hezbollah really doesn't stand a chance. But what does concern me, though, is that since Hezbollah is an Iranian proxy force, what is Iran going to do? And in our next post here from Insider Paper, we're getting a headline here that says Iran warns of quote-unquote consequences of Israeli attacks on Lebanon after the Golan strike. And obviously, we don't know what an Iranian response would even look like. All we know is that Iran is considering getting involved in in this fight, which is very concerning to see because this could send the entire region into pure chaos if everybody starts jumping in and the entire region starts fighting with each other. This could be very bad for the Middle East uh, stability, uh, which, you know, the Middle East is always in some sort of fight, but it could get a lot worse than it has been. And also, we have yet another sign that things are going south very quickly in the Middle East. And right here in this post from OSINT Defender, we can see that the governments of France, Norway, Belgium, Sweden, and also Saudi Arabia have called on their citizens to depart immediately from Lebanon while the commercial flights are still operational. And that's a pretty clear indicator that something is going to go down because when all the governments start calling on their citizens to leave these countries, that does indicate that something massive is about to occur. And we see that right here. But with that, we're actually going to move away from our Israeli news and onto our Ukraine news because that's all we have at the moment on Israel. And right here in this post from Nexta, we can see that the general staff of Ukraine says that at night, the AFU attacked the oil depot Poliva in the cursed region of Russia. And quote unquote, Quote, strong explosions and fires were registered and probably tanks with oil products called fire and the oil depot consists of 11 tanks with a total volume of 7,000 cubic meters and is used primarily to meet the needs of the Russian army. So this was quite clearly a military target and right here we see Ukraine taking it out with drones once again. So this is a major loss for the Russians and also they're going to have a very hard time fueling up their vehicles in the future now that their depot has been ruined and that this is a tragic event for Russia but a very good event for Ukraine. Ukraine. And then moving into our next post here, which goes to Osint Yuri, we can also see that the AFU also conducted a drone strike on what's believed to be a boiler plant at an oil refinery in Nizhny Novgorod in Russia. But with that, we actually have a video of this one. So let's take a look at the strike by the drone. 
And right up there, you can actually see the drone coming in on a nice, clear flight path toward the boiler unit of this uh, oil refinery. And there's the smokestack of it right there. And here is the drone going right down toward its target. And there you can see it very clearly. It went right down and bam, right into that boiler. And in a moment, you will see some smoke and also some fire. Maybe in this camera angle, I'm not really sure. There's some smoke right there. And it did hit that. So that refinery is going to be out of action for some time while the boiler is out. So yet another successful hit by the Ukrainian. But with that, we're moving into our next article, and this one goes to Max24, and we're also learning of an Attackums missile strike on a Russian training ground in the Luhansk region. And apparently, this training ground was home to the military personnel of the 228th Motorized Rifle Regiment of the 90th Tank Division of the Russian Armed Forces. So, they were hit quite badly with 19 killed and 71 wounded, and another major victory for the Ukrainians with the Attackums missile strikes. And with that, we're moving on to our next one here, and this one goes to Null Reports, and we can see that on July 26, which was about a few days ago, we see the result of an attack by Ukraine on the Saki airfield. We see that an Su-30SM was indeed destroyed, and another Su-30SM was likely damaged by debris, according to our sources. So I was wondering which aircraft actually gotten taken out by the Ukrainian forces on this airfield, and now we're learning it's the Su-30SM that was destroyed and another one damaged. So very good news to hear, and I'm glad to finally have some closure to that report right there that we had a couple of days ago. But with that, we're moving on to our last post of the day, and this one goes to Null Reports. And in this one right here, we can see that Putin is now attending the main naval parade in Russia, but you'll notice that the Black Sea Fleet is actually not present in this video. So let's take a look at the video here and see Putin scooting around to look at this very fractured fleet. So here we see Putin on the boat right here with a microphone looking at what is left of the Russian uh, naval forces and it looks like it's gotten slimmed down pretty big and there's no sign of the Black Sea Fleet right here. That's because they are in pretty bad shape and also what's left of the Black Sea Fleet is now restationed away from Crimea and toward the Russian mainland. So instead of calling this a parade, the Russians really should have called it a, a, a damage assessment because that's really what this is right here. It's basically looking at what's left of this very broken fleet that the Russians have. But with that that, that is actually our last post of the day. So obviously we've had some very big news coming out today, especially from Israel and also Ukraine as well. And we'll be covering all the remaining news that we have left and all the other news that might come out throughout the day on tonight's nightly war news stream at 10 p.m. Eastern. So be sure to join us for that. And also as well, if you want to support our channel, be sure to press the like button and also subscribe to the channel as well. That greatly helps us get the news out there. And don't forget to go check out our Patreon page. The link is in the description below for Patreon, where you can go over there and sign up for a monthly membership membership and support the channel that way and it greatly helps us out a ton because the channel is almost ent entirely crowdfunded by the viewers and of course that support is greatly appreciated but with that we'll see you all tonight at 10 p.m eastern and bye bye for now